What is going on everybody and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush episode review. Today guys, we are going to be going over episode 14 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. Very excited to be going over this episode with you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So, generally speaking, what were my thoughts on episode 14 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush? Well, I thought it was a pretty solid episode for the most part. I mean, going into this episode, I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. I mean, this is the first episode of the second arc of Go Rush, and typically with bridge first episodes in their arcs, they're not really the greatest and really for the sole reason is because obviously we just got out of this high octane battle between Udius and Zwaijo to where, you know, most of these first episodes of the new arcs aren't really that much. But I will say, though, I was actually pretty surprised with this episode because with this episode, it did focus on trying to progress into the next plot, which I really do appreciate because the biggest thing when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush right now that I really hope that they do is make sure that they are able to use the 13 episode arcs well. During Sevens with the 13 episode arcs that we got in that show, I felt like they didn't really use the 13 episode arcs that well. It just felt like a lot of arcs got rushed because they took way too long to really get into the arcs and by the time they got into it, we were basically already halfway through the arcs. So, with this episode, one of the biggest things is that I felt like they needed to really try and get started with the plot as soon as humanly possible, so that way you can use the best benefits with the 13 episode arcs. Even though I still think that is a little too short, you can make it work if you give the time necessary for like you basically allow as much time as you can to be able to flesh out the arc as much as you're possibly going to do. And this episode, I did think it did that very, very well. But obviously, we got to start off the beginning of the episode to explain why. So, the beginning of the episode started off where we had Udius actually getting a promotion after all of the events that have happened throughout the first arc with, you know, him improving as a Rush Duelist and was able to defeat Zwaijo in his last battle. Yuumu and the UTS group decided to basically promote Udius, and this makes Yuhi a little jealous because for the amount of time that he's been working at UTS, he's had no sort of promotion. So one of the biggest things that he was now looking forward to was trying to find a way to be able to get himself a promotion because he felt like it was kind of unfair that Udius, this newbie, was able to get a promotion, but Obviously, Yuhi being Yuhi, there is a reason why he's never gotten a promotion because A, he's not really the best duelist, and B, he's not really the best worker, so that's why he's never gotten a promotion, which I'll say this much, not being a hard worker, that completely makes sense, but what does dueling have to do with getting com a promotion? Because UTS's whole thing is trying to deal with aliens. It has nothing really to do with dueling. Now, yes, I know that obviously the deal with Zwaijo, who was an alien, they had the resolve to dueling, but that's basically saying that every scenario that you get involved with aliens, you have to involve dueling, which is not the case. In fact, we've seen them go out and actually deal with different tasks, and they never had the resort to dueling. So, I don't know. I felt like that was a really weird criteria. I don't think it matters as much as, like, hard work. But, I don't know, I just thought that was a pretty interesting quote there. But, obviously, Yuki is trying to find a way to get himself a promotion, and it seems like he was able to find a way to potentially get that promotion, and that is thanks to London, because after the events that happened, London actually decides to pay a visit to them, and after being able to get away from Manya because she didn't go with London to go to the UTS building, London basically tells the group that he wants them to go to this abandoned area of the alien facility 
and try to find this person that apparently went missing. And, you know, at first it seems like this big opportunity to be able to get some more work in and Yuhi thinks this is a great opportunity to get that promotion. However, the other members of the UTS, basically Mr. Dezaki and the rest of the group, were not the biggest fans of this because of the stories that they've heard of this underground place. So basically they were trying to say, no, you're not allowed to go in there. It is strictly prohibited. But obviously London still wants some help from this. So in order to be able to do this, he decides to duel against Mr. Dezaki specifically. And basically this will allow Udius in the group to be able to actually go to this forbidden area if London can actually win this duel. So we actually get to see not only London duel for the first time, which is kind of weird to say because we had that whole little like TV thing earlier on in the first arc and it seemed like London was going to have some involvement in it, but we actually never got to see London because obviously Chupataro took over the spot because he basically tied him up to where he couldn't do anything. So we actually haven't really seen London do anything from a dueling perspective. So not only was that cool, but we actually got to see Mr. Dezaki duel as well in this episode, which was the biggest fascination with me specifically was because this was going to basically confirm a lot of stuff when it came to these specific characters and I got what I wanted to know when it came to these characters more than I thought I was going to get so let's talk about Mr. Tazaki real quick or more specifically Galaxian Tazaki yes it is not Galian Tazaki it is Galaxian Tazaki, which means that this is not the same character from Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. A lot of people have speculated on whether or not this was the same character, and I think a lot of people went towards this being that same character because they looked so alike. Like, you can look at other characters like Manabu, like Yuhi and Yumu, and they looked distinct enough to where you can make the argument that they might not actually be related to their Sevens counterparts. You know, Manabu with Gakuto, you have Yuhi and Yumu with Yuga, but when it came to Mr. Design, he was a splitting image of Galliant from Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. So a lot of people thought, oh, this is going to be Galliant from Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s in Go Rush. Whether or not it was going to be the same person or not from 7s, we really didn't know. But apparently, not only is it not Galliant from Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, it's not even Galliant in general. It is a completely unique character, which is very interesting to say the least. So that basically tells me that every single member of UTS and every older like character that we see in the show that has a very similar and not the exact same design as a character from Sevens is going to be a completely different character, which not really the biggest fan of that, if I'm going to be completely honest. I've stated it before, but I don't like the fact that they're using a lot of you know, similar named characters from uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. I mean, we have a Shogetsu, we have an Oda, we have a Dezaki, we have a um, Atachi. You know, we have all of these different characters that have similar last names or even similar first names to characters from the previous show. Like, I don't mind if they use some aspects of 7s. I really don't. But I feel like we're getting to a point where they're using too many sevens aspects. And the reason why I have a big issue with that is because it's not going to allow Go Rush to stand on its own two feet as its own unique show because it borrows too many aspects from sevens. And I think this is one of the biggest examples from this because this entire UTS corporation, besides Udius, is built upon characters that have counterpart relations to characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s with like Galaxian, with Yuhi, with Yuamu, with Mr. Um, Yagi, with Miss Maki, with that weird purple-haired girl with the glasses, which apparently people have told me is supposed to be Princess G's counterpart, which I did not even see at all until someone pointed it out. It was a costume she wore in episode 40. So you have that. And then you also have like the Django looking dude. You have the Galliant looking dude. You have 
um, Mr. Omino. Like, obviously, you have all of these different characters that have aspects from Sevens, and I just feel like they need to cut it off with that because there is no reason we should have this many aspects of Sevens related stuff in the show. Again, I want to iterate. I don't care if they want to use some aspects from sevens obviously bridge did sevens first so it makes sense for them to borrow some aspects especially since sevens was a successful show so it's not necessarily a bad thing to do it i just feel like there gets to a point where you're using the assets a little too much especially a little later on in the episode we actually learn of the character's name that london is wanting the group to search for so we'll get into that in a little bit but that kind of will also revolve around this whole discussion that i'm talking about right now where i feel like they're using too many aspects of sevens but let me know your guys' thoughts on that i'm very interested to hear your guys' thoughts on that maybe i'm the only one that really believes that maybe you guys have no problem with it like i'm very interested to hear your guys's opinions on that but we have the duel between london and galaxian um personal thoughts on it i just thought it was an all right duel i'm gonna be honest i really wasn't the biggest fan of it because of the tutorial aspect of it you know Going into Arc 2, one of the biggest things that I was excited for was that we were going to finally be out of the stupid tutorials. I've stated it before, but I'm getting sick and tired of these damn tutorial duels. There is no reason why it should be taking this long to be in tutorials. Like, there's just no reason for it. And I don't care that they're explaining all of these different aspects to Rush Duels. Here's the thing, there are other ways to learn about it besides the anime. I want you to get on when it comes to the duels and not have to stop in the middle of the duel to explain some random crap about the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. There is no reason that every single freaking duel needs to do this. The only duels that have not done this in the show, I believe, was Udius versus Waijo and like two other duels and that was it. Now... To give credit where credit is due, when it comes to these tutorials, the biggest benefit that these are doing is that it's teaching newer players about the game of Rush Rules as much information as possible with this show. And although I do think that's great to teach newer players about Rush Rules, because going into Sevens, although they did teach stuff, they kind of expected people watching Sevens to be people who watched, you know, the original six Yu-Gi-Oh! series from the Gallup days. And because of that, you know, they have, didn't really go full into these tutorials like what Go Rush is doing, where Go Rush is more focused on the newer audience. Here's the thing about it, though. I don't care if they want to teach as much as they can when it comes to Rush tools. But how about this? Instead of teaching crap like this, why don't you teach more advanced stuff that you couldn't just learn from a freaking guidebook that you get in a structure deck? Like this stuff that we have been learning since the first arc and even in this arc is stuff that you would learn in a freaking guidebook in a structure deck or even a starter deck for that matter. Or I don't know if the Psycho decks have them as well, but that's something else that kind of has this whole issue as well. Most of this stuff that we've been learning, you could find in that guidebook. And hey, if these kids or whoever is watching go rush for the first time is interested in rush duels they can learn this basic stuff in those guidebooks so why don't you teach more advanced stuff that's not really been talked about in those type of books that you really need to explain because maybe they're a little bit more complicated the only things i could really think of is like mistiming and like chain like activations like i don't know if rush rules actually have stuff like that but that's just to give some examples but obviously if you're rush rule professionals you know some examples that i probably don't so if you know what i'm trying to get out with that and you guys can think of some things that this show could teach that's a little bit more advanced let me know in the comments because i do think that would kind of get my point across that when it comes to these tutorials teach the more advanced stuff so that they wouldn't put in guidebooks because they're a little bit too complicated. How about you try and teach some stuff that you wouldn't find in these like guidebooks from a structure deck? Now, 
I guess to be fair, there is some stuff that they can teach in there and I think is completely fine. Like piercing, I honestly don't think it's really that bad to put it in the show because I do think piercing... It doesn't really happen all that often, but I do think it's very important because it teaches new players that you can't just defend the entire time because your opponent is eventually going to find a way to be able to pierce through your board and it's not going to really solve anything. So it's not like learning about piercing in this episode was bad. I just think the over necessity of these tutorial duels is just getting ridiculous at this point, especially since... Which is like I said, you know, this is stuff that you could learn in guidebooks from Structure Decks. So, I don't know. When it comes to this whole tutorial stuff, I feel like either they need to stop with the tutorials because, again, they're getting ridiculous at this point. We should not be in the second arc and still having to learn this basic bullcrap. What we should be doing when it comes to this tutorial stuff is teaching stuff that would not be in guidebooks and that will be a little bit more difficult that actually needs some explanation that I do think is very important for people to know about rush rules. Not piercing, not field spells, not summoning monsters from the graveyard. Like, that's just literally reading the card and you should be able to learn how to do that. You don't even need a guidebook for that. So, yeah, either stop with the tutorial duels or do something that is actually important and is actually like advanced stuff that rush duelists have to learn that's the only thing that i ask at this point because at this point i don't even know if they're just going to stop the tutorials at this point we can be in the 20s and we're still going to be having tutorials like that's what i'm talking about where get rid of this basic bullshit crap there's no reason whatsoever that we need to be learning this much basic stuff about rush duels when honestly it isn't really that hard to learn about it do more advanced stuff that is all that i ask but besides that little tangent i do apologize for rambling on there it's just something i'm getting really sick and tired of it's actually taking me out of the duels a lot more than i thought it would because they just done it so many freaking times at this point it's getting annoying but besides that, you know, the duel wasn't that bad. We got to see London's deck for the first time, which was like this, like, it's a similar, like, music theme deck, like what Roa had, which, God, London just reminds me so much of Roa. I'm just going to say that much. It's not a bad thing because I absolutely loved Roa, but I don't know. London just feels like a straight up Roa 2.0, oh, which, again, not really a bad thing, but I did not realized that he had so many similarities to Roa but we got to see his like cassette type deck I think it's called Arts Angels I believe is what the deck is called but it's like this cassette looking type of archetype which is pretty interesting to say the least and then you obviously have Galaxian's deck that's kind of more focused on like gardening and that stuff which we kind of knew it would maybe be a deck like that because we saw him having this big gardening and I think episode 7 I think it was so I think that was also pretty cool to see his deck as well and then, like I was mentioning earlier we this whole episode was learning about piercing and the likes and you know that was basically Galaxian's whole entire strategy was to use piercing to get over London's defense so it was a pretty interesting way to actually show us off how piercing actually works and then London was basically able to make a comeback after basically allowing Udius in the group to basically escape because his whole reason for dueling Galaxian was not just the win so that way he can let the group go he was wanting the group to go while he was dueling Galaxian and he was able to get the message through to them so basically they go run off to the train station to where they need to be to get to the forbidden area and after the duel they realize that they are gone but they decide to actually let them go through because after the duel with London, they basically had a change of heart and they said, you know what, we'll let you guys go down to that area. You guys can handle yourselves. And basically, they let them on their merry ways. And the episode ends off with them learning who the person that London sent them to go find, which was Goha Yuna. So, we get another Sevens counterpart in this show in the form of a Goha character, which is pretty interesting to say the least. Very excited about this, even though I am getting tired, like I said earlier, about these whole counterparts that we've been getting in the show. But this one I am a little intrigued 
of because of the fact that we actually get to learn how Goha functions in this show specifically. Because obviously, you know, it's Matsuba Town, not Goha City. So obviously, we get to learn, you know, what Goha is all about and, you know, what happened to Goha. What is Goha in this universe? So that's going to be very interesting to learn. But with that being said, that is going to be it for this Yu Gi Oh! Go Rush episode review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your guys' thoughts on episode 14 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush. Did you guys like the episode? Did you think the episode was okay? Or were you guys not the biggest fan of this episode? And let me know your guys' thoughts on the duel between London and Galaxian. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the whole thing with Galaxian and him not actually being Galliant. And let me know what you guys are looking forward to for this arc and what you guys want to see in this second arc but with that being said that is going to be it thank you guys so much for watching and until next time guys take care and have